Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings again in uh, uh, every part of the continent, uh, every part of the country, and every part of the globe on which you are uh, tuning in from. So it's a privilege to get to talk to you uh, once more about the love of Christ, about this man, about the hope for our planet. You see, um, I keep talking about hope because I see no hope in some of the things that we do. I'll tell you the following. I'm a scientist, in speci speci more specifically, I'm a physicist. And that's what I do for a living. I enjoy it. I enjoy studying nature, the very first book that God uh, gave to humanity. You see, when we were created, according to the Bible, the first book that we were given to read wasn't the Bible. The Bible only came in 1,500 years or so uh, uh, after. No, not even that. About uh, 2,500 years later, uh, after creation. 1,500 years was to the flood. Now, the question is, as we go through life, what hope is there for humanity? What hope is there for us as a fallen race? That's the question that we need to zoom into. So, um, let's talk about this. We are a doomed race. We have not figured out the question of death, and we have equally not figured out the question of life. Because if we figured out the question of life, we would be able to figure out the question of death. Apart from what is written in scripture, we do not know anything, anything about death. So there are different schools of thought. Some people tell us, well, when people die, the spirit goes out. Some people tell us when people die, um, that spirit is able to see what's happening. Uh, when people die, some people tell us uh, all sorts of schools of thought, right? So let, 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 let's, let's, let's study the Bible and get hope. I, I don't want to talk about death per se, but we want to talk about hope beyond death. Now, this is what we are faced with. When we die, according to the Bible, the dead know nothing. Death is like sleep without dreams. So you're sleeping, but you're not dreaming. Think of that. When you're sleeping and not dreaming, you don't even know that you're sleeping. You only know when you wake up that you have been sleeping. That scares me about death. Because should I die, I wouldn't know that I'm dead. So I only know now that I'm alive, that I'm alive. But if I stop living, if I stop breathing, if whatever is called life stops from me, if that thing called life departs, I won't even have consciousness to know that I'm dead. That is scary, let's admit it. But is there hope beyond that? You see, there are many religions on earth, but there is one religion that preaches about hope beyond death. I'm not talking about getting a bunch of virgins in heaven because one died a martyr. No. I'm talking about improving current life and getting hope beyond today's life. That's what we are talking about. So what do we have? I'm alive today and I know it. You are alive today and you know it. When you die, you know nothing. You, you won't know that you are dead. But there is hope in the Redeemer sent by God, the creator of the heavens and earth. So who is this Redeemer? It is none other 
than Jesus the Christ himself. You see, different religions would come in with all these different people. But there is Buddha. There is the tomb of Buddha. There is Mohammed. There is the tomb of Mohammed. Yes, there is Jesus. And there is the tomb of Jesus. But what's the difference between Jesus of Christianity and um, every other person who died or founder of every other religion? Well, it is in the, the difference is in the life. So when you go to the other tombs, you go to the tomb of Buddha, ideally you'd find the remains of Buddha because he never resurrected. You go to the tomb of Muhammad, you'll find the remains of Muhammad because they never resurrected. But take a walk, take a flight. Whatever you do, just make sure you visit Jerusalem in the Middle East. When you get there, get into the uh, garden of Joseph of Arimathea. When you get there in that garden, look for the tomb of Jesus. When you get there, get into the tomb of Jesus. You won't find even a finger. Not even a fingernail. Nothing will you find that smells of death. Because Jesus, who died one Friday afternoon, between two and three, resurrected the following Sunday morning by daybreak. That's the creator of the heavens and earth. So John, in the book of uh, John chapter 1 verse 1, he tells us he is the word. He tells us he was there in the beginning, whatever that beginning is. He tells us he was with God. And he tells us he was God. So this is the light that shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Yes, Christianity has its roots in Judaism. Fair and fine. But that light shined in darkness, but the darkness could not comprehend it. So they rejected it. However, grace still opens for all. Grace is still open for everyone. So when he died, he was buried, and then on the third day, he was resurrected. So um, some of his disciples went there to try and find this Jesus, to find his uh, body. So it was um, the two ladies, one of whom had been forgiven many sins, so she wanted to anoint the body of Jesus because she couldn't do it before the Sabbath that Friday when they buried him. The sun was setting, so she couldn't be there with a dead body. So in the morning, on that Sunday morning, Jesus being dead was able to resurrect himself before, before the ladies could catch up on with him. So, yes, this is the Jesus um, that we talk about. His tomb, I repeat, his tomb is empty. He is the life. He is the only way to get to the Father. He is the only way and the only truth to a much, much better life. He is the hope for this, broken, uh, for this broken world. You see, when we read from the book of John, and we are reading here from John chapter 3, from verse 16, it says, For God so loved, okay? So maybe um, I should change this English slightly to the modern English. Because God so loved the world. Okay? So that means it's actually a statement beginning from nowhere. So if you step back from verse 14, he says, 
and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so when the children of Israel were getting beaten by snakes in the, in, in, in the wilderness, in the desert, uh, what happened? Okay, this is what happened. So Moses, who was leading the children of Israel, was told to make a serpent. So he made that serpent huge, okay? So an image of the serpent. So he made the image of the serpent. And that's the symbol of uh, some health departments today, or the symbol of health. Now he made the serpent. After ma making the serpent, so these people were being bitten by poisonous snakes. They were not given uh, any antivenom. They were dying in the desert, in the desert from the, ven from the, uh, from the uh, 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 very poisonous snakes. So, but they were not given the venom, the, uh, the antivenom. Rather, they were told to look on the snake and they would live. And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. That's, that's the opening part. So, in the wilderness, as the children of Israel were getting beaten by uh, poisonous snakes, they did something counterintuitive. As they were lying down there, in order to be saved, they had, they had, they didn't need to take the, the antivenom, no. They had to look on the serpent that Mo, whose image Moses had made. So as they looked at the serpent, so he says, and as Moses lifted up uh, the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. So Moses lifted up that serpent and everyone who looked on it did not need the antivenom. Everyone who looked on it did not need a painkiller for the pain from the, pa from, 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 uh, uh, from, from the snake bites. And everyone who looked on it never needed a bandage or anything like that. They were saved because they looked on the serpent that Moses had made. They were saved because they obeyed God. So today, the call is on us to look on the man, to look on the man who is God, to look on the man who walked this earth for three and a half years before laying down his life at the cross. Yes, he was crucified on the cross, but he never died from the cross. He didn't die from the wounds of the cross. You see, the wounds of the cross were supposed to, the, the, the way the cross was engineered, it was supposed to make someone um, die from excruciating pain, after a long time hanging on the cross. So people would hang on the cross for days before dying. But when Jesus was nailed on the cross, within six hours, he died. So that means he didn't die from the wounds of the cross. He did exactly what he told us in John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal and to destroy but he came so that we may have life and have it abundantly. So he continues there to say, no, as we have this life, nobody cheats or robs him of his life. So in other words, the people who crucified him to the cross did not take his life. The devils, the demons that were there on, the, uh, uh, on that Mount uh, Golgotha, that skull-shaped hill, did not rob him of his life. They put him on the cross he had the power right there in him to walk free of that cross. But because he had prayed in Gethsemane, what did he do? He laid down his life for us. So, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. So Moses made this serpent and lifted it up, and all who looked on it, after being bitten by the snake, received life. <laughs> Look at this. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. So Christ was lifted up on the cross, on that tree, so that is the world which, is, which has been beaten by demons, which has been beaten by sin, uh, the world which has been beaten by death, may look on him. So the solution is not per se the world that has been beaten by HIV and AIDS. So the solution is not per se in the drugs that we are trying to find. The solution is not in going to Mars. The solution is looking on where God says we should look. The solution is in obedience. 
And that solution is in looking on the one lifted on the cross, lifted on the tree. So as Moses lifted up the serpent, so we, so, so uh, must the Son of Man, the Son of Man being Jesus himself, be lifted up. And this was fulfilled already 2,000 years ago. That whosoever, so why must he be lifted up? So that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Because God loved the world, that he gave us that one and only begotten son, so that everyone uh, who believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do we want everlasting life? Do we want a better life for our children, a better life for our posterity? We must look on the one hanging on the cross. May the Lord bless you as you ponder upon these words. <laughs>